All right, looking at multiplication, it was awesome to do it with our area models and our base 10 blocks. Uh, it was a real easy way to kind of condense and, and, sh and learn how to regroup and see how regrouping works, as well as a really quick way to do our multiplication and count up how many units we have in each problem to come up with the answer. Now we're going to start using the partial products uh, way of multiply <coughs> multiplying. So what we need to do is determine where each partial product is in our area model. Our problem here is 24 times 32. Doing this by partial products means we're going to start with our ones place and we're going to multiply 2 times 4, which is going to give us a total of 8 units. Now that partial product is represented over here. We need a 2 by 4 rectangle, which is 2 units and then by 4 units. That's right there, shown right there, um, with the units port region of our area model. <coughs> then we're going to take the 2, which is our 1's place times the 10's place up here in the 24. So this is actually 2 times 20, and you see that written right here for a total of 40 units. So we would need to find an, a rectangle region in our model right here that is 2 by 20. Well, I'm going to continue up because I know that this is a 2 by 2 10 long, so that's 2 by 20. There's your region represented there for this partial product. Then we need a 30 by 4, which is shown here because we're multiplying a 10's place by a 1's place, so that's really 30 times 4, shown right there for a total of 120 blocks. So we should have rows that are 30 units by 4 units, represented right here in this region. And then we're multiplying our 10's units by our 10's, 3 times or 30 times 20, which gives us 600. We're going to represent that in this hundredths region, and we should have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Thirty units, which would be going this way because each side of these are, are ten units long on our hundredths flat. So there's ten, twenty, thirty by ten, twenty. So we need thirty by twenty, and that's where um, this partial product is represented in our model here. So how many partial products did our problem have? We had four, which is kind of the same as the amount of numbers that we have there. I'm sorry, digits that we have in our two numbers that we're multiplying. How many regions are in the rectangle? This is our rectangle. How many different regions are there? Well, there are four, where the 100 flats are, where these 10 longs are, where these 10 longs are, and where these units are. That's four different regions. Why do you think the number of partial products and the number of regions are the same? Uh, there are four products and four regions, so the four products use the same numbers as the dimensions of the regions. Again, we're going to determine where each partial product is in the picture. Go ahead and, um, well, it's already labeled for us. So we need to find the 2 by 4, which is down here in our units again. I'm sorry, this is a copy, and I just now realized that. So we're not going to do the same problem again. Let's move on. Let's look at the problem 17 times 31. First, you need to estimate the product, which I would probably do 30 times 20, so it's probably going to need to be around 600, maybe a little bit less. And then complete your area model sketch for this problem, record the dimensions of the rectangle, and then answer the following questions. So you're going to solve this problem just like it's solved right here. We need to see the area model, your partial products, and then answer the questions that are listed here. Pause your video now. When you have your answers, um, press play, and we'll go over them and see if you got them right. Okay, so let's start answering our questions. Um, the first one is, what does the 7 represent? 7 represents the number of 1's that we have. The part of the rectangle in the lower right-hand corner with the dimensions of 1 by 7. Here's your lower right-hand corner. 
we would have only one row of our dots, and but they would be seven tall. What does the 10 represent? The part of the rectangle to the right of the large squares or 100 flats with the dimensions of 1 by 10. So we're only going to have one 10 long on the right along with our units over here. So we would cut that one out and we would cut this one out up here. So we'd have one 10 long and then we'd have seven units. There's two partial products so far. What does the 210 represent? The part of the rectangle below the large squares with the dimensions 30 by 7, the other part of the 10 longs that I have. So I would think we would have 30 by 7 over here. What does the 300 represent? This is the largest part of our rectangle with the dimensions of 30 by 10. That's the number of hundreds or 100 flats that I used. And so looks like we're going to have one row of the hundreds. That would give us 30, 30, 10, 20, 30 by 10. So we would knock off this whole top row from this particular problem um, to get our partial products. How many partial products did the problem have? I would assume that there would be four since there are four digits in our numbers that we're multiplying. How many regions are in the rectangle? Should be the same, four. And then what do you think the number of partial products and the number of regions are the same? I'm sorry, why do you think they are the same? The four products use the same numbers as the dimensions of the regions. So we should have a four by four. Okay, we should be getting to some practice problems here pretty soon. Let's see what else we've got going on. See you in the next video.